We're here at ITU Telecom World 2014 in Doha in the state of Qatar and I'm very pleased to be joined by Rolf Pfeiffer who is Professor Emirate of the University of Zurich. Uh, Professor uh, Pfeiffer, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. My pleasure. I'd like to start off by talking about the central theme here at ITU Telecom World 2014 is future in focus. What developments in technology, policy or business do you see as key to the near future? Okay, I'm a technical person, so let me stick to the technological uh, ideas. I think an interesting development is the fact that, you know, previously ICT and robotics was very separate, but recently the two have actually come together, and I think the most visible uh, sort of testimony is that Google has been buying, in the meantime, I think about 28 robotics and artificial intelligence companies. So in that sense, you know, they used to be specialized on search, you know, if you like, and now they recognize that there are other things in the world. And I think one direction, one really interesting direction is the world of physical objects. And I mean, one of the fundamental differences of robots to traditional, you know, ICT is that robots are physical entities moving at least partially autonomously in the real world. And also, I think the Internet of Things, you know, goes in the direction of connecting physical, real physical objects to the ICT world. Can you tell us a little bit about the projects that you've been involved with recently? Yes. We have been involved in many development projects, typically in the area of robotics. One, let's say, visible project that we have been pursuing is this Roboy project. That's a very special robot because most robots have motors in the joints, but obviously humans don't have motors in the joints, but we have muscles and tendons. And to be sort of human-like, we also developed a robot that has artificial muscles and tendons. And we use that as a research platform to study the functioning of the musculoskeletal system. And we have a lot of interest from, um, you know, like the medical domain, training of doctors and physiotherapists, and also from brain science. You know, so we're connecting this to a very big simulation of the brain and they need a physical platform. I think simulating the brain alone is not very interesting because the brain only makes sense as part of an organism. So that's one of the projects that we're, we have been pursuing. We also have Roboy on display here at the exhibition. Another project that uh, we're pursuing is this RoboLounge project and the idea is I mean here people talk a lot about the future and of course that's important and we can talk about the future I think it's even more important to have a platform in which people can actually experience the future you know so sort of get a taste of the future and in a sense then you could say well people also talk a lot about the value of data you know big data I think this is also in a sense maybe metaphorical sense, a method of data acquisition, and I think maybe the most valuable data, which is personal experience. Now, you've said that we're already in some ways slaves to robots. What do you mean by this? Okay. Um, people often ask, well, can you still pull the plug on the robot or on the computers? Well, I think you can pull the plug on an individual robot but you know as we have been hearing here from from all the uh, talks is that everything is connected so it wouldn't be pulling one plug but it would be pulling millions of plugs and i think we all agree that this would be the end of the world you know in all in all respects you know the financial system the economic system logistic system food system energy everything would collapse traffic so we can no longer pull the plug, which implies that we have to keep the robots running or the computers running. And this is not our free will that we say, okay, yes, we like to keep them running. We have to keep them running. So in a sense, we're forced by the robots and the computers to keep them running. Also, we're forced to reproduce them. It's just that, I mean, they actually do reproduce. It's just that the reproductive mechanisms are different from the biological reproductive mechanisms. But they force us, for example, to build factories for them so that they can proliferate more quickly. 
Science fiction has given us a lot of images about robots. Uh, Robert Heinlein, for example, during the summer, uh, robots uh, helping around the house and that kind of thing. But uh, we're still quite a long way away from that. Is that right? Well, that's very true. On the one hand, we don't have like the general purpose household robot. It's also not clear to me whether that would be an economically viable development. If I look at our Roboy, you know, which is a really advanced robot, it's it's expensive, it's fragile, you know, it le needs a lot of maintenance, and it's far from being, you know, nearly as performant as a human being. So yes, in that sense, we're far away from it. On the other hand, we have so many things that have come into our daily lives. You know, we have the, well, of course, we have a lot of toy robots, we have uh, uh, specialized machines, you know, lawnmowers, we have vacuum cleaners, we have uh, delivery robots in hospitals and in homes. Uh, we have uh, self-driving cars. I mean, techni technologically speaking, they're ready, they're there. I think it's now a matter of regulation. It's a matter of you know, dealing with the ethical and legal issues. But that's something that's already there. So in that sense, um, I think the robots are all around us. It's just, and you know, maybe some of the stuff is not really so visible, but it's around us and we have it. Or if you look at the medical domain, for example, support suits, rehabilitation robots, surgical robots, these are all robotic, this is all robotic technology, maybe not humanoid robots, but robotic technology that is already in place. And you know, it's a, it's a multi-billion dollar business. Now, emotional reactions to robots can be negative. Uh, why are you seeking to investigate or change this? Okay, I mean, th the reason they're negative is, or there are several reasons. One is, you know, we know Terminator, we see Hollywood movies, you know, with these old mean, mean robots that want to enslave mankind. Well, we have long since been enslaved. And we hear about war drones, and we hear about robots taking away people's jobs. And now we hear about these people, you know, saying uh, artificial intelligence is a really big threat to mankind. So this is all negative image of robotics. I think there is also a lot of benefit to robots. I mean, if you look at, for example, factory automation, you can say, well, it's taken away people's jobs. But we wouldn't have our mobile phones, we wouldn't have our household appliances, we wouldn't have our entertainment robotics, we wouldn't have our cars, we wouldn't have our motorbikes, all the things that we love, we basically owe to robots. So robots are also a very good thing. Also, maybe when we get old, the aging problem, I mean, it's going to be a huge problem. It's already a big problem. I think we will need robotic technology and we will be very happy about having robots that will help us, you know, uh, staying autonomous as long as possible. And also, I mean, artificial intelligence has recently been called our biggest existential threat that needs regulatory oversight. How would you react to that? Yes, I mean, just to, just to be uh, sure, there are many, many threats that are, I consider much more serious than uh, artificial intelligence. I mean, just look at NSA, look at the power of Google, look at things like that. I mean, these are, these are real big threats. And I also think there is a need for regulation there. I also think that in the area of artificial intelligence, there's a need for regulation. We just have to be careful that we're not smothering interesting, potentially beneficial developments by over-regulation. So I think it's a matter, it's not a matter of regulating or not. I think it's really finding a good balance there. Now we're here at ITU Telecom World 2014. It's an event which brings a lot of different uh, minds together. I just wanted to find out your, your impression of it. Okay, I think this is really important to get, you know, not only you know, the regulators, but get the regulators, get the companies. Maybe we could have some more technologically minded, you know, actually people working on the technology development. Maybe that could be beneficial, but I'm absolutely, I've been working with uh, interdisciplinary projects for the last 40 years. And I think that's extremely beneficial to bring people from different areas together. Finally, uh, I caught up with you yesterday, but I just want to ask you uh, once more in, the, in this environment, what single technological development do you think will have the biggest impact in the next five or 10 years? 
Okay, I mean, as Niels Bohr, you know, the famous physicist and Nobel Prize said, it's hard to predict, especially the future. From my point of view, I mean, what I know best, of course, is the robotics technology. And I think the development, sort of also the insight that there is something besides ICT, something physical in the real world, I think that will, and connecting that to the ICT world, I think that will be one of the most significant developments. We also have, uh, you know, there's this uh, nice book by Chris Anderson called The Makers. And he has this slogan from atom, uh, no, no, from bits to atoms. So basically in the ICT world, we have the bits, easy to reproduce. And in the real world, we still had some limitations, but I now think with the advent of 3D printing and um, that, that uh, we're maybe facing a similar development as in the software uh, domain in, out there in the physical world and bring this all together. I think that's the most exciting development. Professor Rolf Pfeiffer, thank you very much indeed for those fascinating insights and we wish you all the very best with your projects. Okay, well thanks very much. Thank yeah, you. My pleasure.